All right, guys, this is going to be a good one because the ones before were even worse. Better is the enemy of good. Just keep that in your mind, whatever's left of it. So, the title is Totally Clickbait, Mangled Monterey. Now, I've told you guys before, when you're in the business of Econo Arch Tops, do not try and recover your childhood that you did not get the catalog guitar that you wanted. And even if you did, the rich kid got the Gibson or the Cromwell or the Kalamazoo, which were manufactured by Gibson anyway. But the best you could do and still get laughed at by your friends was a Harmony Monterey. Short of the Harmony Montclair, this thing was the top end of the Harmony line. Now, this one is from the late 50s, um, and it's got purfling, it's got good binding. The top of it is spruce, um, which, again, getting into the good arch tops, that's what they were. So, here's a decision you got to make. If you can get something like this, and the neck isn't broke loose, and the body isn't broke loose, and you look for the telltale signs, is something wrong here? Uh, is, is the uh, binding cracking here? Is there something cutting loose down here? And, and, and all that, the answer is no. And your action at the 12th fret is good, and it's not this high. And you're looking at buying this thing, great. But if someone's trying to sell you one of these for $350 to $500, and you've got to get the neck reset, when you take it into a shop, number one, they are not going to be impressed with your uh, catalog guitar. They want to make money doing setups and blowing setups out the door because they're going to tell you, number one, I don't want to do this. And they won't tell you, I don't want to do this. They'll tell you a super high price and then you'll figure out, okay, by the time this is done, I'm going to be into it $1,200 and it'll be worth $500. So again, pay attention. But if you're out shopping guitars and you run across one of these, don't cut it up and put a pickup in it and all kinds of stuff if it's in this kind of condition. Now, why do people find these desirable? Well, if you're going to play acoustic guitar and you're going to have one with F holes, this is kind of the one to get because it's affordable. And I'm going to write like right now. I think I'm going to try to fake it that I can play a guitar. So you can make it do this. Ooh, that was pretty good. Let's try some Sun House. Wow, okay. Here comes strike three, Fred McDowell. So, Harmony Monterey, ooh ah. I'm going to show you one in a minute that's not so ooh ah, which is about what this episode is about. But while we are here, let's talk about another one you might take a look at. These usually were all mahogany. This is Harmony Patrician. This is a 1940 model. I can tell because it has binding only on the top. No binding over here. Somebody in corporate thought, you know what? If I skip the binding in the back, we're going to save a bunch of money and I can make more money. Well, guess what? This guitar is also a good one. It doesn't have the wide body width, but this is the harmony equivalent of what would have been a Martin arch top. You never heard of a Martin Archtop book closer. There's one in the LA area I've been tracking for a while. But this is a mahogany top. Somebody used a pick here. But these things, Harmony Patrician, good guitar. Let's try the same repertoire. Where was the Sun House? 
Fred McDowell. Ooh, I surprised myself. That was, that's everything I got, sorry. So, should you buy every uh, Harmony Patrician or Harmony Monterey C? No. And let's look at why. Notice this does not have a truss rod. The Harmony Monterey does. It doesn't mean everyone does. I don't want these to fall over. Most of them I don't care. Let, let's look at a little later Harmony Patrician that does have a truss rod. Ooh, look at this one. Clean one or at that that tuner peg, I can show you how to fix that, and I will someday. But this one is a clean one owner, except somebody tried to go Richie Valen and used house paint to paint what is a complete mahogany body. What are you doing? So, what do we do with this? Well, the minute you do something with the original finish, somebody's going to tell you, 50% of it with no other issues is out the window. So, I'm going to use something. I'm going to take this off. I'm not going to tell you what it is because the first thing you'll do is turn around and do it on one of your good guitars and say, oh, that guy doesn't know what he's doing. Who? The fake luthier. And your friend's going to go, uh, it says the fake luthier, right? Oh, by the way, not a luthier. Love your channel love your channel anyway not enough to suggest that you guys dump me and go subscribe but yeah go subscribe not a luthier okay so I never noticed but this one has some kind of tortoise shell looking binding this is a nice guitar why would you do that to it this guitar I don't know we'll see when I pull the top whatever this is off of here and see what turns out but again Patricia and Monterey is not typically good to junk pile up, be cutting holes in spruce tops and whatever. Now look at this one. This is a Harmony Monterey, but it's from the late 40s. It's in a little bit rougher shape. Look at the neck. Now let's look at the body. Uh, guess what? It doesn't have one. Yeah, this is the mangled Monterey we're talking about now. Am I filming the end? Am I filming the beginning of the episode before the after? Maybe. Yeah, here's the body. I've already taken the back off. Um, this is a spruce top. Everything's drying, coming apart. Got cracks everywhere. This is the one we're going to fix today. So. Let's see what we can do with this one, and um, maybe it is worth junk piling. We'll figure it out at the end, but it's a little bit early to talk about it before we do any work. All right, guys, before we get going, a couple of housekeeping things. Be the hero. Go to Michael's or Joanne's and get these canvas totes that I've been telling you about. I did an episode right up there, right about now, about how to arrange your inventory, starting with tagging the instrument and putting color codes on them as the work goes on or doing work notes on the back. But these toasts work out great. They have handles. You can hang them on your bench if you put in a hook or something like that, and they come in really handy. Next thing, have some kind of a container that holds parts and if you're smart you will drop a magnet in there and if you're smarter you'll glue that magnet down somewhere so it doesn't fall out but you're going to put that there and then we're going to get on taking some stuff off of here because we're going to need to do that there's a lot of cracks and things like that so when I I also have a screwdriver here that's got a lot of different bits that come in a set here that just slip in and out really fast. Um, these 
flathead screws suggest that this guitar is very old. I'm not going to use those again. And I tend to steer away from this kind of a, of a tailpiece. Look at how they just jump right on there. You see that? Yeah. So, the strings are really the only thing that is holding the neck on here. There we go. We're going to pop this off. Did not want it to jump out. Imagine that. And get these strings out of the way right away. Tetanus special. And look at that. The neck came right off. I don't know how many times I have to tell you, but I'll take a dried out guitar versus one with a bowed neck anytime because pulling and steaming and and all of that is not a good thing. Trust me. That will go in the parts bin. And these strings will get wound up. And again, get your tetanus shot. And then we're going to get rid of these in the scrap pile right away. Now, next thing you want to think about, in fact, you should have thought about it a while ago, is that we are going to have to take off Oh look, somebody had been working on this. There's a piece missing right there. And there's a piece of a shim in the neck right there. But the big thing about this guitar that we need to address right away is the binding is coming off. Now, we want to make sure that we have binding that is number one, not old. This binding looks great, right? Well, guess what? It's old and it's not going to work. So if you buy a binding from a luthier, make sure it's still supple. I like using that word when the context gives me the availability to not be weird using it. But, so I'm going to take some binding that I just happen to have ordered. And you can't always get what you want in terms of binding. So it needs to be thick enough and tall enough. I'd rather be a little long than short, but you can see here that that sticks out. And I'm gonna have to scrape binding, which I don't mind. So I have enough binding to go around the back of the guitar. Now, it's kind of funny. The front binding looks great and I'm glad it does because it's got that herringbone pattern but I'm going to want to take off this binding here and I've got a number of tools I can do it with and you want to remember this binding is celluloid and it's not going to be that good for you to breathe so make sure that you're not breathing it and that you're going to pick it up later but I want to point out the configuration here that was used. Let's get this a little bit closer. They used the kerfing inside to come up over the top of the sides of the guitar here. And then they use that to give a, a gluing surface or a binding channel rather than cutting a binding channel. So you want to pay attention to this one. You want to pay attention that you're going to have wherever there's a gap right there. That means that your kerfing is missing or gapped or falling apart. So when you're looking at a guitar like this and you see some of the binding is gone, binding doesn't just typically jump off. 
it kind of starts to flex and crack as things start to go on inside. And the neck of this thing coming right off, no questions asked, no steam is kind of an indicator. So when you're looking at this, you might, might want to tell somebody, I have to take the back of this off. There's going to be some kerfing repair. And um, that stuff tends to eat up some time labor-wise. So you can put some time into watching me and figuring out how long it takes me if I would ever be quiet and just get to the work. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of some of whatever this is on here. I don't think I'm going to try to refinish this. I like the way it looks, but i got to figure out how much of this is just grime and dirt and get things cleaned up because i got some significant cracking going on. There's a crack running up to the F hole here. And um, there's another crack there that I don't think I'm going to have to worry too much about. But once I get the back of this off, I'm going to be able to do a lot of this work from inside and on the back here. There are numerous cracks, a big one here, uh, some here, and I'm going to use an edge clamp to take care of that. So first thing I'm going to do is use a, a an, what's the next word, element? Let's call it an element. Not a Honda element, but I wish I would have bought one of those things because um, I could have washed it out with a hose. But once I got my stuff off, I'm going to snap the lid back on here. And we'll get this in the bag. And we're going to hang this up and get it out of the way because as clumsy as I am, I'm going to end up dumping this stuff all over the place if I don't watch it. So see over here I got a vise I just turned a little bit I hooked the bag right there I'm done with the screwdriver I am actually going to put stuff away as I go can you believe that okay real quick here I have hobo hot plate running in the background and a little pallet knife so I'm gonna let that warm up I've got granny's iron over here to hold things down and get it warm but I'm going to use this wonderful rag here and I'm going to fold it up so you can see what's going to happen again I'm going to use some unknown substance here that I don't want to tell you about because if I do you'll actually use it and if you use it wrong it's going to have some horrendous consequences and then you're going to trash me instead of being a responsible adult which is a goal in most of our lives. This stuff um, vapors off very quickly. You can tell that it's trying to grab onto itself immediately almost as if I t when I touch it and go over the surface again. You see how quickly that's happening? Look at all that. Now, the problem with this stuff is that sometimes if you've got a good guitar, in fact, if you leave this open for very long, it will actually run dry in the space of a half an hour, and then you'll start feeling like, oh my. I feel loaded. So I've given you enough hints there. But again, this stuff will strip finish off of a guitar. You don't want it around any nice guitar you're working on. But look at all that. Okay. And do the same thing here. Get rid of all that. This stuff is bleeding off like super quick vaping off stay away from vaping vaping is like bad for you I used to smoke two two and a half packs a day and I quit overnight and started smoking Snickers candy bars I think which accounts for all this 
here. But yeah. Would you suck on the tailpipe of a bus? Yeah, I don't need to hear about that. I don't want to give you any ideas either, but yeah. And I will tell you something else about this secret mystery. Look at that. Mystery stuff I'm using. If you get it really near binding, it will either glue the binding or melt the binding. Are you starting to figure out what this is? No? Well, good. So. Oh, I can smell that hot plate. I wish I had some Chef Boyardee SpaghettiOs or some rice bologna. That's actually rice aroni. Um, I was dreaming the other day that I was rich enough to get some rice aroni and put some bologna in it. Oh well, maybe someday. There, we got all the external crud that we are going to need off of this thing. Look at that. Incredible. Now, I have told you before, we do not want to take the top and bottom binding off. In fact, I really want to keep this binding, this top binding intact. Again, it's herringbone. You see that? How cool is that? Did we actually get some sheen back on that terrible finish? Yeah. So, I'm going to stand this up like so and start on the binding. I've got this knife that's heated up. And I'm just going to go along and let the binding heat up a little bit. Now, I kind of expected this to be a little bit easier because it had been coming off on its own okay, but we'll get underneath here and we'll just work it. I might want to score it with a razor blade both ways because, yeah, there we go. I really don't want, especially on the curves, binding tends to want to grab onto this. And if you pressure, it'll start a running crack here. We're just going to figure out where there's a gap there and try to get in here. Don't be afraid to let that knife sit and heat up a little bit because once you get going, it gets easier. Now remember, you can also take a razor blade that you've put a piece of scotch tape on where you don't want the blade to cut and you can just get the right angle going on here. I don't think my camera angle is perfect for this just yet. Maybe that's okay. But anyway, I'm just going to set the razor blade down there and just score where the wood and the binding come together like so because, I, again, I don't want to start a bunch of cracks. So I can also use a quarter inch chisel. And once I've scored that, I can come in like so. I just want to make sure that my angle is right on wherever I'm working because I don't want to start a bunch of cracks. Slow down if things are giving you a problem and come in and run that edge. You can use your the side of your little finger as a spacer, kind of like if you're running a cotton torch to keep your line straight. And then as you need to go back and get the heated up palette knife and just drop it in there and melt things away just a little bit. Get some heat going on there. See how I'm walking it like that? I can just put it in the groove here. I'm not prying. I'm just moving it around. Do you see that? And once I get in that gap, I'll just move this around and keep walking it down. I don't want to go like this and gouge it. I just want to make sure that once I get in between the binding and the wood, I'm just going to walk it down like so. I'm starting to cut loose. 
don't start a fire in your own shop. That's kind of embarrassing. All right, as you're going along here, don't get real sloppy because you want to remember along the curves, that's usually where you have problems with stuff sticking or whatever. And you want to see if there's cracks running. As I've told you, if you nick something right here, let's say I'm being errant with my chisel, I can actually get a little nick there which will turn into a crack. So I want to make sure that I'm taking my razor blade and again it's got tape on it. So I can just use my thumb as a guide service and get this set right there and then just follow that radius like so and score that. And then I can also take my heated up palette knife and start walking down the edge. Now, if I see a crack, before I start trying to pry around the crack, I can take some CA glue. I like this green Zappa Gap, and be careful with this stuff. Um, but you can just basically use a fine applicator tip. I, in fact, I have some that are like even go down to that. You see that? That fits on the top of this and it has just a fine, fine uh, droplet. And then I can, I can take some binding tape if there is a piece of wood that's going to come off and I can apply this and tape it like I'm going to do a binding job until that settles up which will take a couple minutes and then I can go in and go back to work with my razor blade and preserve that piece of wood and it will be glued in place but again whether you're putting binding on or taking it off the radius areas are going to be see how this heated up again I'm walking it I'm curving it around I am not prying it at all see walking it along and letting the heat do its work like so again these areas right here where the grain ends right there if you nick it you are going to have a piece missing at some point how many guitars do you see that have cracks right here that's why Okay guys, we are getting into a spot right here where the binding is pretty thin and it's brittle and there's a lot of cracks going on here. And so this is a problem area where if you don't heat things up and, and go through and score things, um, it can be wood coming out at some point. So you just want to go in again and score with the razor blade that tape will protect you but the heat here and following along that lower part of the binding channel until you see the tip of the knife disappearing there and you just scoot and walk and scoot and walk and then just take your chisel very lightly yeah, see, this is starting to be more like carving wood now than popping things off. So, slow down, take your time, and act like this guitar is the most valuable thing you've ever worked on. All right, guys, we're down to the last bit of binding here. And this has been about a 15-minute project because wherever somebody was holding it against their body the binding is very thin there we go now what we're going to do is I'm going to pull the back of this thing off and I've got this Fred Walke special something or other I think this was taken out of some hotel in downtown LA under mysterious circumstances in the 1940s I don't know but anyway, this thing is awesome. When you get it heated up, you find that edge right there, and you just walk in, 
and you just go back and forth a little bit and I'm dependent on that this is high glue the head block is right there and you just walk it back and forth with some heat and that high glue will cut loose. I'm all the way around now here we can see that there were some cracks here but you see this is coming right off with this thing so be careful you don't want to use a ten dollar knife to ruin a four dollar guitar ask me how hot this is ah very hot all right we're getting close now bingo let's see what's let's see what's been hiding in here since 1943 oh there's a model number 1327 it's a harmony they used they used fabric to reinforce both the top and the bottom that's why there's not too many cracks here this almost looks like somebody's been after it before but the tone bars appear to be in shape kerfing missing yeah somebody's been into this before so uh, I can blame it on them later when I totally screw it up if, you, if you're gonna buy this don't watch this part alright guys welcome back to nonstop action acting California culture capital world God bless you if you're still watching this garbage so you saw me pull the back off of this Harmony Monterey and now what we're going to do is we're going to set this aside oh I do want to show you something pretty cool here these cracks right here along this edge and the top here I want to remember that when they started putting these wooden pieces in here and using them for a bracing what inevitably happens is when things start to dry out this never dries out evenly we saw um, one of the junk piles I can't remember what it was but it was oh it was pumpkin this was bowed up that's why we called it pumpkin so these inevitably will cut loose here uh, but not here or worse yet they'll cut loose on the ends but not in the middle and it just warps this and then you can tell that somebody didn't put this all the way across to where everything glues back together this is just a piece they had laying around we just slop that in there we're doing piece rate on these guitars so this kind of thing we're going to want to take that off but up here on these cracks like this let me show you something pretty cool in the world of violin makers and cello makers and repair people they have what's called an edge clamp and it looks like this these things are pretty pricey but they come in handy so what you do with these and again I'm going to steam this off before I do anything to fix these and again I'm going to use my chick flick teal nurse ratchet my chick flick teal fabric not anyone else's but up here actually we're waiting for the high glue to heat up I can put this like so and there is padding on the bottom of these so I just screw this one down here see that until it's tight but not enough to dimple it and then that one like so you see that and then I just take this here and I just screw this in until it closes the crack look at that okay and then I can glue it and clean it again this fabric here is going to be a problem I'm going to heat it and pull it and then put a um, a patch of wood here and one here a cleat but this is pretty handy along with that when you're working on stuff that has um, you don't want to take the back off 
You can use something like this, so you drill a little tiny hole, or use the crack itself, like this crack right here. You see that's flexing right there. I can drill a little tiny hole, and going through the F hole, I can fish a nine, eight, nine, or 10 string. And then this thing's just a piece of wood with another piece of wood. It's got a Grover Imperial tuner, which makes it very expensive. Anyway, you just pull, put a cleat on the ball end of a string. You feed the other end up through the guitar. And the cleat has a hole on it. And you put your glue on it. And then you put a piece of dental floss here. So when you pull it through, the dental floss stays in your F hole. That way, you can pull it out when you're done. But then you just fish that piece of string up and wind it through like you were tuning up a good putting string on a guitar and then you just turn this until it's tight pull everything together and that way you can glue the cleat and now my hide glue is probably hot enough to use so as I explained before just like with the K K150 what they did rather than putting solid wood on the back and bringing the sides up and then taking a binding cutting jig and going around and cutting that binding what they did is they just used the sides which is called a spur in a violin or cello but they used the the kerfing inside the guitar which is called lining and some other instruments and then brought it up past you see that they brought it up past where it normally is and then used that kerfing as a channel for the binding. It made production a lot quicker and cheaper. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go along and make sure that there is hide glue everywhere where there's supposed to be hide glue because if it's starting to come apart here and it, it had dried out enough the guitar had dried out enough for the neck just to come off well then I don't want to put something together and then two or three years down the road have somebody drop the guitar because I know that everyone is just going to take such wonderful care of something that looks like this right we're going to leave it this way we're just going to put heavy French polish on it and it's going to be a junk pile but whatever we want to make sure that while we're inside of it that we're going to glue up everything and then there will be some sanding to get this flat and then of course I've told you a hundred times when you are using uh, you're, you're working with a guitar you're taking the binding off when it comes time to put everything back together this space you see that flexing a quarter inch right here will throw your neck angle off I want you to look at something really close here someone has said well you know what I think that that this cloth repair came after the fact. Well, no, because the, the factory stamp as to that it's a Harmony Model 1327, which is a Harmony Monterey. That stamp is over everything else. I don't find a factory date stamp in it yet, but if you look really close, this is not plywood. That's a spruce top. See that right there? Yeah. So. This thing's got a lot of secrets and it'll be nice, well at least semi nice, after I'm done with it because it sure ain't much before. Okay, we're gonna take our European violin maker's hide glue that's been heated up and we're gonna take a brush that's gonna let us put, that stuff, the viscosity of it is pretty thin. Mix it thin, you will win, mix it thick, whatever, but you can tell where this was before so I'm going to pull this back a little bit let's do this left-handed and everywhere where it is loose we'll put that down in there and fortunately for us let's pull it back a little bit more without breaking it there we go Now I want to try and control this some so I don't doesn't look like it came out of the 
Harmony Factory during the Christmas rush. We're going to do both sides. Okay. And then we are going to pop that in where it sits. And I have my coolest thing ever my tape dispenser. It's got all different kinds of tackiness. Some of it even beyond as tacky as I am. But it's got my binding tape right there and I'm going to put a couple pieces of that here and there where I need to like so once I make sure that this is in place now remember the finish is coming off of this and we saw in that video we did with the KK150 I'll give you a playlist of that right up there right about now I can't do this cameras upside down whatever anyway you'll watch that so I don't have to repeat the pain of a binding job but then we are going to take some clothespins I stole from maybe your grandmother's clothesline when I was young and no we didn't take underwear off of people's clotheslines and go hang them at dawn of day at City Hall in Waupon, Wisconsin. Look that up or don't. Anyway, it's kind of that simple. And then we're going to go along wherever there was hide glue, which is everywhere, and just go in and touch up those edges like that. Now, we've already mopped all the dust out of here like so but we want to catch the top and bottom and if you keep the hide glue hot the capillary action will send it down and behind the wood through principles of cohesion adhesion and other words I heard on Jeopardy just before I started filming this term used loosely episode right here but I think you get the idea so if I turn the camera off and start it up again I'm just going to talk a lot of garbage and you're going to get burned out and some people have made it very clear they're not here for me as a person they just want to know what I know so they can invade my market and compete with me on the three guitars that are available at yard sales throughout the United States at any given time. Where does that come from? I don't know. I'm not the one watching it. I lied, but only for your feelings. Let's get a close-up look at this crack repair. I've put some of this fabric back a little bit and we're opening up that split in the wood like so and we are going to make sure that the glue is down in there and then we're going to take our edge clamp and we're going to open it up a little bit not too much where it all springs you can see that this part here is padded you see that let's open that up a little bit so we can get that laid back down like so yep there it is and then we will put this here and this down here and get this one over here like so see that and then watch as we bring this together there we go everything is good Okay guys, we're at a spot right now where I think it's good. I have put hide glue, hot hide glue everywhere that 
the hide glue was supposed to go in the first place and we're going to let that dry up and then we're going to do some sanding and get the back on and then we're going to put the binding on it and get everything lined up and then we got some decisions to make do we want to put a pickup in this and what is this thing worth if I don't do anything to the finish? Because guess what? I take the finish off. It's worth 50% of what it was worth before. What a dilemma I am in. Give me a like and a subscribe if you haven't. Get a notification when I really destroy this thing in the next episode. See you then.